Hi, I'm Joni Armstrong, Director of Project Access. Project Access began in the fiscal year of 1985, and I joined the team in 1991. Before that, I taught both regular as well as special education English and served as a psychological examiner for a rural educational co-op. I'm also a licensed professional counselor in the state of Missouri. I'd like to welcome you to the introduction to serving students with autism in the schools. This is a foundational training designed for people working with children with an autism spectrum disorder or sometimes called ASD. You won't know everything about autism when you complete this little set of modules, but you'll have a good start. Should you have any concerns or questions, please feel free to contact us. Some of you may have questions that are beyond the scope of this training. If so, I would ask you to email your question to the address on this slide. An appropriate person from the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education will be happy to answer your question. Following this training, participants will demonstrate the following competencies. General knowledge and understanding of the characteristics of autism, as well as the educational criteria used in Missouri to determine eligibility for special education services. Also, the awareness of some of the individual learning needs for children with autism. This slide and resource one provide an overview of autism. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, there have been some resources included that will not be specifically referred to in the audio slide portion of this presentation. These materials provide concise information about some of the most frequently asked questions about autism. The overview is a great resource to give to families and care providers. We're going to review this slide in some detail, but before we do, please spend a few minutes reviewing your resource one which is a copy of this slide. As you review it, put a check mark next to the information you already know and an exclamation mark next to any information you found surprising. Autism is a common developmental disability. More common than Down syndrome, autism is not a disease nor a mental or emotional illness. A child cannot be made autistic through any means, including abuse and neglect. Some people used to think autism was caused by parental practices, such as cold, aloof mothers. They termed this the refrigerator mother syndrome. These beliefs have now been disproven, and autism is a lifelong disability. Most researchers agree there is most likely a genetic link or a genetic predisposition toward autism. And while no single gene has been identified, researchers have identified a number of genes that play a role in the disorder. Although information is still being collected, there is a growing evidence that a variety of biological and environmental elements may be the deciding factor as to whether a person with a genetic predisposition actually has autism. Autism is brain-based. With the advent of the MRI, studies have shown that most, but not all, brains of people with autism are underdeveloped in the same few regions, particularly those regions which re regulate emotional processing. This interesting finding is, however, not universally true for all individuals with autism. Differences in brain development indicate autism cannot be fixed or cured. It's a lifelong disability. People with autism can learn skills and adaptations to help them manage their symptoms. If a child with autism does not look autistic at age nine, then congratulate yourself on the excellent strategies and education you have given him or her. That child is managing his or her disorder the same way we might manage our poor vision by wearing glasses. Another consideration is the difficulty with the diagnosis of this disability. There is no specific medical procedure that can tell def definitively 
whether a person has autism or not. No MRI, CAT, or PET scan. EEG, blood, or urine test. None of these medical procedures can be used for this purpose. Many medical procedures are being done, mostly in the name of research, but none are currently useful to rule in or rule out autism spectrum disorder, or as I mentioned previously, ASD. This can sometimes be confusing to families and service providers who may think the medical and genetic tests are necessary for diagnosis. So, how is autism diagnosed? It is diagnosed by observing behaviors. A physician, pediatrician, or other medical professional must diagnose autism the same way an educational diagnostic team does, by observing the behavior displayed by the child. Traditionally, people have looked only at the problem behaviors, and these are often the reason for seeking an intervention in the first place for an individual with autism. It is important to remember ASD is not merely a behavior disorder, that it can be addressed through teaching self-regulation skills, impulse control, and understanding of others' viewpoints. It is a disability with core deficits in communication, responses to sensory input, disturbances in development, and in the ability to relate appropriately to people, events, or objects. It is not a single faceted disability. It is a complex set of excesses and deficits. Autism is treated through good educational programs. Since autism is not a disease, there is no standard drug or surgery to treat it. Many forms of treatment are being tried, including megavitamins, restricted diets, administration of secretin, holding therapy, and horseback riding. None of these treatment programs have a good body of empirical evidence at this time. There is, however, much evidence that educational treatment can make a significant lifelong difference. We have strong evidence for specific educational programs effective for children with autism. Scientific evidence concerning educational programming has been examined and reported with recommendations to help guide educational programming, assessment and diagnosis, family intervention, and personal preparation. Later, we'll review some of the features of good educational programs that prepare children with autism to become competent adults. Even though autism is defined by observing behaviors, the same set of behaviors is not found in every person with autism. There is no one universal behavior. Furthermore, autism is a spectrum disorder meaning an individual may be mildly autistic, severely autistic, or at any point in between. According to the latest statistics reported by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, one in 88 children born will experience an autism spectrum disorder. I thought it was interesting to note when I began my career with Project Access in 1991 Autism was considered a low incidence disability and the numbers were 1 in 10,000 live births. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in 2010, males are four times more likely to have autism than females. And according to MOFI, the numbers in Missouri reflect 1 in 83 children are born with autism, and 1 in 52 males as opposed to 1 in 213 females, which if you do the math will still give you about a 4 to 1 ratio. These numbers are calculated using 2006 CDC surveillance data from the St. Louis area. Between 1 and 3 percent of individuals with autism also have what's known as a savant skill. 
that's about two out of 100 individuals that experience autism will have a savant skill. A savant skill is a talent that an individual possesses that wasn't taught. It, it's an innate gift of some type of skill. For example, an ability to calculate math or to possess perfect pitch or having some type of artistic talent. The ability to read at an extremely early age, hyperlexia, would be considered a savant skill. A report published by the CDC in 2009 shows that a, between 30 and 51 percent, 41 percent on an average, of the children who have an autistic spectrum disorder also had an intellectual disability or an IQ of less than 70. Please understand that there is no standardized IQ test that exists for persons who experience autism. An IQ test such as the Wexler or Stanford-Binet is not going to be reliable or valid because it was normed on non-autistic individuals. In some circumstances, these types of tests can measure the person's weaknesses rather than their strengths. For now, I just want you to remember that IQ tests are not a reliable measure of intelligence for parents, for persons, excuse me, for persons who have an autistic spectrum disorder. About 40% of children with ASD do not talk at all. Another 25 to 30% of children with autism have some words by age 12 to 18 months of age and then, for unknown reasons, lose them. Others may speak, but not until later in childhood, and still others may have some speech, but not be able to use it in a functional way. In other words, they can't get their needs met through spoken communication. The main goals of education for persons with autism are employability and independence. These goals can best be met through significant integration into settings with normal peers. Good educational programs include instructions in the four basic life domains of domestic skills, vocational academic skills, social leisure skills, and community integration skills. Good educational programs embedded within the four life domains the following skills. Social interaction, domestic, non-traditional academics, or in other words, functional life, practical things, problem solving, critical thinking, communication, social leisure activities, generalization, self-monitoring, self-management coping, and work behaviors. Several medical disorders may co-occur with the learning and behavior patterns identified as autism. Common co-occurring disorders include things like epilepsy, intellectual disability, Down syndrome, Fragile X, tuberous sclerosis, Williams syndrome, Prader-Willi syndrome, Landau-Kleffner syndrome, and even Tourette's disorder. As mentioned previously, many individuals diagnosed with autism will also test in the range of intellectual disability. But don't forget, there is no IQ test that has been normed with individuals who experience autism. So those numbers are not reliable or valid. A number of children with autism develop seizures at some period during life, and educators will want to watch for that. The child's phys physician will be able to diagnose these co-occurring disorders and prescribe medical treatments if necessary. The medical issues cannot be addressed by educational programs, but the treatment for autism is a good educational program. In addition, 
to the slide, Resource 2 contains contact and general information about the Autism Society of America. Here's the link for ASA. The Autism Society of America is the world's largest autism organization. It was established in the 1960s by parents of children with autism. Some of the world's foremost experts in autism are members of its panel and professional advisors. It is inexpensive to join ASA and members receive publications and other benefits. The contact information for ASA is listed on the slide. Autism Speaks is another excellent site for information about ASD and this site features several videos. The Oasis at MAP site is a good resource for information about and for higher functioning individuals. Here in Missouri, the Thompson Center at the University of Missouri offers an informative website. And finally, Project Access website lists our trainings and other information, fact sheets, and so forth specific to school personnel in Missouri. It's often said each child with autism is unique. No two children with autism are alike. In many ways, this is very true. There may be wide variations among children across all areas of development. One child may be moderately intellectually disabled with mild sensory difficulties and may be only mildly interested in interacting with peers. Another child may be intellectually gifted and have serious sensory disturbances and a passionate desire to interact with peers, though his or her interactions may be odd. Still, another child may be severely intellectually disabled, nonverbal, and self-injurious. They look so different. But upon closer examination, the same basic areas of disturbance are present in each child. No single behavior is indicative of autism, nor will a child show all possible behaviors in any targeted area. Some of the behavioral indicators may be intense, while others may be relatively mild. Some of the behaviors indicating autism are typically seen at specific stages of normal development. The significant difference in autism is the intensity of the behavior and the persistence of the behavior you're beyond the normal developmental stages. In May of 2013, what we knew as the DSM-4 has now changed to the DSM-5. The DSM refers to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Medical personnel, including doctors, psychologists, counselors, and employees of the Department of Mental Health, use the DSM to make medical diagnosis. This slide demonstrates what used to be included under the medical definition of pervasive developmental disorder, which included Asperger's disorder as well as autistic disorder. With the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM-5, it was released at the American Psychiatric Association's annual meeting in May of 2013. It marked the end of more than a decade's journey of revising the criteria for the diagnosis and classification of mental disorders. One of the most important changes in the fifth edition of the DSM is regarding autism spectrum disorder. The revised diagnosis represents a new, more accurate, medically and scientifically useful way of diagnosing individuals with autism-related disorders. The subcategories were eliminated and the only category and subsequently diagnosis will be autism spectrum disorder or ASD. The basic premise is that the diagnosis along the autism spectrum is more reliable than trying to differentiate between the prior subcategories. There are four major changes to consider. One, the previous subcategories, as I mentioned, have been eliminated. 
two instead of three categories of social impairment, language communication, and impairment and repetitive and restrictive behavior, two categories will be used. These will include social communication impairment and repetitive and restrictive behaviors, or sensory. Individuals will be described in terms of any known genetic cause, level of language and intellectual disability, and presence of any medical conditions that might be present. And four, a new category is being added, social communication disorder. This allows for the diagnosis of social communication disorder without the presence of repetitive behavior. So you might be asking yourself, what does all this mean? Well, according to Autism Speaks, the DSM-5 committee has indicated that all individuals who currently have a diagnosis on the autism spectrum, including those with Asperger syndrome, will retain their ASD medical diagnosis. As in most changes, time is going to tell how efficient and accurate the new criteria support those with autism spectrum disorder. If you would like to explore more information regarding the DSM-5 on your own and the changes that have been made, here's the website address. In Missouri, these are the educational eligibility criteria areas used for assessing autism spectrum disorder. The first two areas are mandated and required for a student to be served through the special education label of autism. The last two areas may be present, but they aren't required. It has been our experience at Project Access that most children who have an autism spectrum disorder do experience problems in all four of these areas, and we strongly encourage the IEP teams to look closely at all four. Remember, if the behavior has ever been present, even though it may not be an issue any longer, it still counts in the history of the student's behavior. So when you're filling out that quadrant form that I'm going to show you here in just the next slide or two, I don't want you to forget to consider the developmental history of the youngster that you're assessing. Each of the four criteria begin with the phrase disturbances of because the areas are not simply delayed. We tend to think of D as a delay, but it, in this particular case, we're looking at disturbances. The profile of a child with autism shows relative strengths and weaknesses or maybe an uneven pattern, hence the term disturbance. Keep in mind, medical diagnosis is not educational identification. An educational eligibility criteria is not dependent upon a medical diagnosis. Now I'd like for you to turn to resource four, which is the Missouri State Plan for Special Education, Autism Definition, and Criteria for Eligibility. The resource is also available online at the link which is listed for you on the slide. It's a good idea to check the link from time to time for revisions to the plan. Our resource represents information available during the development of this course. This resource provides the educational definition of autism and eligibility criteria from the current Missouri State Plan for Special Education fiscal year 2013. Remember, there's no medical or educational test for autism. Autism is diagnosed by observing behaviors. Here is a way to structure your observations of a child that you may suspect to have autism. This slide doesn't look exactly like Resource 5, but it's similar for explanation purposes. Resource 5 is an easy form for organizing your observations of a child's behavior. 
This form is also represented on the slide. Sometimes when diagnostic team members begin to observe children's behaviors, they find it easier to collect notes on a notepad and then group the notes into these four areas later. As observations of more and more children are completed, team members become more adept at mentally grouping behaviors and making notes directly onto the form. It is a good practice to keep multiple copies of this form on hand. The two required criteria from the current Missouri State Plan for Special Education are on the front of Resource 5, and the associated areas are located on the back. Observations structured this way can help an evaluation team sort data and determine eligibility easily. Notice there is not a numerical score anywhere on this form. There are no numerical scores included in the current Missouri State Plan for Special Education Eligibility Criteria Concerning Autism. Numbers don't ever tell us very much. It's really the behaviors that we observe that are the important information we gather on youngsters we suspect to have autism. Remember that autism is behaviorally defined. There won't be any specific test score that indicates autism. Standardized and informally obtained information gathered in the evaluation process may be organized on Resource 5. Use of the form assists in making a decision regarding eligibility for special education. There are not a particular number of characteristics that must be present, but certainly there should be enough in the two required areas or mandated areas to make it clear that educational autism is present. Sometimes there are numerous characteristics in the sensory area or developmental areas, but insufficient characteristics in the required areas. This occurs because there are students who do have significant sensory motor integration problems and or developmental differences, but they don't have one touch of autism. The sensory and developmental areas are supplemental. They're not required. But as I mentioned a couple of slides ago, remember that if a problem ever existed, it still counts in the history. For example, if a student did experience echolalia at an early age, but no longer experiences it, just because the echolalia is no longer a current issue doesn't mean that it didn't exist or doesn't count. The behavior will still count even though it may not need to be formally addressed at the current time. Having a thorough developmental history is an important part of the assessment process. History remains the same whether it's been accommodated or is no longer an issue or is something that is currently present and needs an intervention or strategy. Thank you. This slide concludes this section of the intro module. Go ahead and take your quiz and I'll see you in future modules.